Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1011. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, 1011 to 1012, click on the link below the video. Hey, um, in this video right here, we have a budget. And there's a subtotal. And we want to conditionally format one row above. So with conditional formatting, there's some built-in features, but a lot of the uh, more advanced conditional formatting are done with logical formulas. That means each cell in our data set has to get a true or false in order to get the conditional formatting or not get it. Right? So we need to look for, it looks like, the word subtotal, but then we need to jump up. So instead of doing something complicated where we find the position and jump up, let's come over here and we'll build our formula. Uh, in a parallel range, and then once we get the formula working with our trues and falses in the position we want, so we want a bunch of trues right here to indicate this is the row above, then we'll copy the formula into the conditional formatting dialog box. All right, so I'm going to start off since we're looking for subtotal and it's not the loan item in the cell, that means there's some other text. We can't directly search for subtotal. We'll have to use the search function. Now, the search function is great because it'll look for some text like subtotal. And then you say, within which cell? Now, remember, uh, and then what it does is search tells you the position of the uh, subtext string. So this is subtotal, so it'll say, hey, that's in position 1. If we told it to look for the fine text letter A, that would be you know, like the ninth or 10th uh, position. But check this out. Up here, for within text, instead of like we normally do clicking on the actual cell, the parallel cell for our conditional formula, we're always going to be looking one cell above. Because remember, if this cell right here sees directly below the text subtotal, then we want the conditional formatting. That means our formula, when we get down to right here, our formula will actually be looking one below, which is fine for this particular example, because that's how our uh, budget is set up. Now, I need the whole row to get the formatting. So as I copy the formula over and down, I need the column reference lock, but not the row. So I'm going to hit the F4 key one, two, three times. Lock the column. That means for everywhere in this row right here, we'll be looking at this. Uh, A4, but when we copy the formula down, the dancing ants will move to the next cell. Now, what does this do? This will, um, of course, give us an error right here because there's, in terms of this cell, there's no subtotal there, but we can copy it down and check this out. Whoa, ones, errors everyone else, so ones, we're getting a string of ones. And guess what? Conditional formatting will do two amazing things with this simple formula. One is it'll ignore the error. So in the face of the spreadsheet, errors are terrible. But in conditional formatting dialog box, it doesn't care. It just says, OK, I won't put the formatting there. Ah, but the one, even though it's not a true or false, it'll still be interpreted as true. So that's all we're going to need, that little formula right there. So I'm going to copy this from the upper left corner. And then I'm going to very carefully highlight. And actually, we don't need to go down one more here. I did here, but we don't need to, because that's the last one. And the, the setup of this is always going to have subtotal there. So now we go to Home, Conditional Formatting, New Rules, or Alt-O-D, which is the old one. And I, I've done a few videos on the new keyboard jerk, and I can hardly remember Alt-H-L-N. H L N. And then we come down here in this list to use formula to determine right here the formula control V. And there's our formula. And then we format it however we want. All right, and so that will work. Now this is a little data set, so of course it'd be easy enough to just, you know, highlight the rows, but if you had a gigantic thing and you don't want to do it and you want to do that conditional formatting, that will conditionally format one row above whatever uh, item in column A has the word, word subtotal. Now, let's check out the subtotal feature. Um, this one here was done manually with the sum function, right? But let's check out the subtotal feature. Here's some products. And maybe uh, subtotal wouldn't work if it really was 
a something something a something something a something something and all the a's had to be uh, grouped together but here if you had it like this these are all the items then all the items in order to get subtotal to work you have to sort the column you want right right click sort a to z once you have those sorted then you can use subtotal now subtotal click in a single cell you got to have field names at the top of course single cell data um, subtotal button right here or you can use the keyboard shortcut alt D B whoops notice that's not going to work because I selected more than one cell just a single cell alt D B now the subtotal dialog box the first important item to know about subtotal is it says at each change in that means it's looking through this sorted column and as soon as it sees a change it's actually going to insert a row right there and do subtotal so at each change in item some function that's what we want and by default it comes just the uh, one the, the last column but we want all three so just like that instantly have subtotals and it actually uses the subtotal function number nine means some function number one means average etc and the so let's try it here I'm gonna come and highlight this and notice it's not subtotal it says total so I'm going to alt o d alt n arrow 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 tab and I'll do the same thing, but in the dialog box. Search. I'm going to search for the text here, total. Comma within. Here's the active cell. I'm going to come one down and click right there. And by default, it comes up absolute. So I hit F412 to lock the column, but not the row. Now, some um, unexpected will happen here, but let's go ahead and add our format and we'll come back and fix it. So there's our formula. Click OK. Click OK. Oh, it looks great. And might actually, this might be fine. Maybe you do want grand total, right, to have the color above. But what if you didn't? Then we're going to have to amend our formula. There's actually going to be two conditions. Alt O D. Uh, I think I can just hit Enter, right? No. Alt O D. And then I have to hit uh, Edit, so Alt E. There's a second condition. I also want to check from this active cell here whether the one below does not have grand total. So there's two conditions. So that one will work. And in I'm going to wrap the search in AND. So AND, that'll be the first condition, comma. The second condition is from the active cell, one below, and I'm going to F4, F4 twice. That's not, and not is less than or than greater than symbol. Together, that means not. And then in double quotes, grand total. So there's two conditions. Boop. Click OK. Click OK. And there we go. You know, I just thought um, it might be easier since for that example where we had to do two conditions, I went and highlighted all that, which included the grand total and this. Why not just highlight broop, just like that? And because the formula there will always be looking one above or one below, this one will automatically catch that last total. So maybe it's easier just to use just the search for total here and highlight a smaller range instead of that two conditions. Hey, um, all right, that was uh, a little bit about conditionally formatting the row above with the search function. All right, we'll see you next video.